Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. Welcome to High 45. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is pretty epic. This week, there's been a lot of awesome stuff. I think we say that every week, but this week, it's yeah. actually true. <laughs> we just start saying, oh, it's been awesome week. It's been great. It has. It's been awesome. So, what have you got? Um, well, this week, I think we're all about augmented t- technology. Tech. Yes, pretty much. And, and augmenting humans. So I've got, oh, we should do our first, hey, so. Well, the back and forth. Uh, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we didn't do that last night. Hey, yes. I'll, I'll start now. That. Okay. Uh, aiming to learn as we do, a machine teaches itself. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I've got the Sony Ericsson uh, Android Remote. Sounds basic, but pretty freaking epic. Uh, Google CEO Eric Schmidt saying computers will augment humanity and already are doing so. Hells, yeah. And I've got this, uh, the, the European government has sponsored this university in uh, Norway to create technolife.no, and it's uh, pretty fantastic. And our Sweet. singularity topic is about... Augmenting. Yeah, augmenting humans. Augmentation. But not annoy, I think. We're going to do it a little different rather than just saying on top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, That'd cool. cool. We're going to start. We want to try and be short this time. So that's what yeah, okay, we've got the time. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go for an hour this time. The past two episodes have yeah. both been an hour. If we go for an hour this time, um, sorry. Yes. <laughs> It's not normal. Not normal. Things do. happen, really. Okay, let's get stuck into it. Shall I do this one? We'll, we'll just we'll breeze through this because we're gonna have to talk about a lot of this stuff. Well, if we do it, for... yes. Hey, okay, um, this is a New York Times article about uh, aiming to learn as we do. A machine teaches itself, and this is actually something which you've been talking about for a while. It's like, why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing this? And they actually are now. Um, a group, a team of researchers from Carnegie Mellon University, supported by grants from DARPA and Google and using a supercomputer cluster provided by Yahoo, have actually put together this system which they call NEL, the Never Ending Language Learning System. And essentially, awesome. it's a system which they've given it a few basic sort of, um, you know, rules and procedures and stuff. But every day, 24 hours a day, it just, it just sits on this, you know, supercomputer and it goes out and crawls the web for just all sorts of phrases. And what they're trying to do is basically get it to master semantics. So the idea of like, you know, when when you say a certain uh, sentence, what does that mean? The whole human language thing, the semantic web, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's really trying to get that computer to go out by itself, like no assistance at all, and just self-learn. Because that's something that hasn't existed that massive, for a yeah. long time. And, and, and well, so what, what's it learning? What, what's it reading? Like it's connected to the net. What what parts is it doing? Everything. Oh. Okay. Just, awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing it just goes... <laughs> like it loads up web pages and see how the text section yeah. and all of that works. It, it probably just does a spider oh. type thing. Um, but it basically goes through and it, it... Like here's an example here. It goes through and it finds the phrase like Pike's Peak. And because it's got capitals, it works out it's got capitals. So it's like, oh, it's at a mountain, blah, blah, blah. And then... It cross checks with all the other data it's uh, referenced and all the future data it's going to reference to work out what that means. Hell yeah. Um, because obviously, uh, like they gave another example that at the moment it, it has it has a really good semantic understanding of all the baked goods like everywhere right. and you know their names and what they mean yeah. and what's in them and all that stuff. But it got tripped up by um you know internet cookies. But see, it's simple stuff like that that's really difficult to teach computers, but where it, yeah. this system's hopefully, like it won't be the be all end all, but it's, it'll help um, sort of build up those algorithms for, for machine it intelligence. It really comes down to that, like the idea of metaphors, the metaphors work so well for humans because we don't understand new things that we need yeah. to actually have it put in an old idea and then we, oh, so it's kind of like that, like cookies with... Well, that's a weird metaphor still for computers, though, giving cookies from a website. But anyway. But see, when, when you say internet cookie, I mean, if you're a nerd, geek type mm. person, you instantly know, okay, that's not a baked good. Well, anyone, but, though. Pro- oh, well, okay, yeah, maybe not in, anyone. Well, see, that's example. it, yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's just got the intelligence of, uh, of a non-geek person. Because, I mean, yeah. still, internet cookie, you, you ask your grandma and they would think it's a, it's a baked good from the internet. A digi cookie. Yeah, digi cookie. <laughs> like, E-cookie. Yeah. No, I cookie. I cookie. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that is like fantastic. So, so we yeah. have to follow this like crazy yeah, now. Keep an eye on it. I mean, it's okay. very it's very similar to the Watson project um, mm-hmm. that IBM's doing. Um, but these these companies are going to be the most powerful companies. Whoever gets this sorted, I, hopefully they they're keeping this all open source. I think they are. Um, yeah, see so, see what happens with it. I mean, it's more just the proof of concept. If they can show just one thing that works, then someone can just grab it, commercialize it. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see. Um, okay, sure. yeah, my thing, pretty fantastic. Uh, Sony Ericsson have, 
have released this uh, this small video, released this idea of a little, well, a little square pretty much that connects to your Android phone, and it's fantastic. It uh, can display tweets, it can display emails. It's it's pretty much just a whole screen that can connect to your phone that you can like to attach to yourself, attach anywhere. Exactly like the iPod yeah. Nano, like you know their new one that they've got out with just the screen just going there. But this is connects to your phone, and you can actually program it and do awesome things with it. The the funny thing with this, though, is that so many people have been against it. Like, you look around, people talking about this around the web, people really, really dislike yeah, this. Yeah, really, because they just they really don't know odd. what to do with it. No, that's point? it. They're like, oh, it's pointless. Why would you want, like, <laughs> why would you want an even smaller screen than your, your phone? Why would you, like, want it on yeah. your watch? Especially considering your phone would be your phone's just there. And then, it, it really boggles the mind. Like, I mean, just thinking about it, there's, like, when you initially think about it, there's not too many uses, but as you go no. further on... There are so many fantastic uses. Even right now, I just looked over and saw the clock that we're tying ourselves with. Imagine if that was just connected to your phone, connected to the computer as you walk around, or the, the car dashboard, yeah. or like on your gym equipment, or and it's always on your phone as well. So you've got the time and you just want to you just want to check if you've got any new like you know emails or tweets or anything. You just check and you go, oh okay, fantastic. Yeah. And this is what this is starting to do. A tiny little square. It's like maybe about not five three centimeters. Three centimeters. Three, three, centimeters, three, three, centimeters, three by three. Five, okay. One. Yeah. yeah deep. And, um, so on each for you American folks, roughly, a bit over an roughly, inch. Yeah. In between each. And so, yeah, that, that's it. Just little bits that are all connecting to you. I mean, people think, oh, this is silly to begin with. At the moment, sure, I'm, it's a, I'm sure it's a bit expensive, but um, it will come down in price. And you've got these little squares that you walk into a, walk into a room, you walk into anywhere, you're automatically connected to all these screens, just every other little bits. Yeah. I mean, that's how you connect products to you. This is or going to phone. be massive. Yeah, it's that whole idea we've talk, been talking about for a while that... Um, we're going to start seeing augmentation through peripherals from yeah. your phone. Yes, that's it. And, and this, this, it. The phone is your computer. Like it's, that's the, the cyborg thing right there. The, the phone is, it's not a phone, it's a computer. It's your personal computer that's always with you. And these screens are the connections to that computer. That's why this is big. That's why no one's getting it, I don't think. Yeah. Well, it would be interesting to see. Because if they don't get it, then that whole error is... Well, yeah, because like, this this could actually kick off that whole peripheral thing, which will then move over to the hard overlays, hopefully. Yeah, because the whole idea of the hard overlay, we have this, you know, it connects to your phone. Yeah, that's the, phone, the phone connects to the internet, the internet connects to the world. Uh, I, I just think it's brilliant that I, I would love, I would love to have like say ten of these, just like attached to different <laughs> things. I don't think the technology is right there yet to like attach all the different stuff, but this is the first version of it. I mean. Come on, like, I mean, imagine having all the clocks, every screen, like, every tiny screen. I'm not talking about, like, you know, your TV or something. I'm talking about every tiny little screen. Every else is connected to you. Yeah. yeah. And you can just see it. And you're like, oh, cool. Actually, there was just a recent story I saw on Kurzweil AI saying something about... Oh, I'll bring it up, put it in the links. Um, something about uh, they've worked out a new technique to actually provide LCD screens with, like, ultra-low power. Like, they don't need... No power, pretty much. Hells yeah. There's been, uh, there's been other people working on organic screens and all sorts of crazy shit. That's great. It's crazy. This, this is the beginning part that I'm, I really want to watch this and go well. That I mean, like, I, my, my iPhone's great, but I really wish I had an Android for this. You should totally <laughs> yes. get it for your one. The Android only? Yeah. But yeah, you should totally get one when, yeah, when it can go there. Well, I'm sure the, iPhone, the Apple will release one, but it'll be called the, you know... Oh, it'll probably be the Nano afterwards, or it'll be something different. That'd actually be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they'll do that. It's pretty cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, my one is, um, it's Google CEO Eric Schmidt talking about how... Computers are augmenting humanity. This article, there's not a lot to it. There's literally just two sentences that are just... Because, I mean... And then there's like a 10-paragraph article about it. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're talking about all these, like, you know, Google me and this, the f future of social Google and all yeah. that shit. But the thing is... He, I'll just read the first paragraphs. Um, more and more, computers will serve to augment humanity by filtering and directing relevant information to users. Said Schmidt. So, recommendation engines. There you yeah. go. Talk about that far too much. <laughs> um, he then said uh, that computers can assist humans and that cloud computing is the magic that allows mobile devices to perform much more powerfully than normal. Uh, one way to think about this is we're trying to make people better people, literally give them better ideas and augmenting their experience. Think of it as augmented humanity. Think of it as trying to get the computers to help us at the things we're not very good at and have us help the computers to do the things that they're not very good at. That's brilliant. I mean, this like you, you can't get it. Yeah, and this is the Google CEO. So, so you get a sense that hopefully a lot of their strategies, a lot of their like future future vision, like you know, ten, twenty yeah, year vision, focus. is all about 
this type of stuff is about augmenting the augmented human. reality and then using that data to build AI. I mean, Larry Page, well, I mean, they've said yeah. that their ultimate goal is to build AI. AI. They have a great future vision, and they're going about where they're going. They are that they haven't really made a misstep yet. The only misstep really the social place, but yeah, they they need to have had Facebook. Yeah. They, 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 if they, they owned up. Facebook, they would be like 10 years ahead right now. I mean. See, it's probably good that they don't, so at least there's a little bit of competition. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, well, they, they acquired everything up going up to there and then they just forgot about Facebook. Yeah. Well, their social thing they're saying they're going to try it. Rather than actually creating a separate social network, they're just going to integrate social tools into all their products mm. somehow. But yeah, that, that thing about fantastic. augmenting, I mean, it, it's going to be there very, very soon. It, it's well, already it's happening. It's Google just doing it. That, I mean, that they can actually say that it's automatic search. Yeah. Like search isn't, you shouldn't type into search. It should be always searching and then just giving you the stuff depending no matter what. When you need it. Yeah. yeah, when you need it. It should automatically search for you and give you the results. I mean, that's kind of a recommendation engine there, really. Yeah. It's weird. And, and this is like, this is less than 10 years away, so I think. We've been, you know, previous prediction was oh, saying, God, yeah. like, you know, recommendation is, you know, data coming to you rather than you searching for data, which oh, is... Oh, that's very quick. That's very soon. Dude. Yeah. Like, the web's so much been about searching for data for the all its life. You so get long. the data, whereas now the data gets you. Yeah. Well, that's and, the then, and, then, the, and then that's the when computers, like, change you. Like, they're changing us now. Yeah. It's just, it's very difficult to see. Well, that, that is really yeah. the, the, the change, because that's when the computers actually get you. The data gets you. Instead of the, the vice versa, that it's that, or if you want to talk in that way, it's that, that organism, like just for the purposes of conversation, I'd say the machine's an organism, that organism is siphoning off you rather than us siphoning off it. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It needs to give back to us, damn it. Yeah. What's your last one? Okay, the last one, which is a lead up to the singularity topic, is, just let me find it here, um, the European Union as, uh, well, it's pretty much Norway. I don't know why they say European Union. <laughs> University of Norway in, um, no, University of Bergen in Norway has created this project called Technolife. And they've released the, pretty much the idea is to just get people discussing these uh, future questions, like, you know, transhumanist type questions. Right. That they've done it in an interesting way that they've created uh, three separate forums around three separate ideas. The three separate ideas uh, about body and mind, body, uh, <laughs> body, body, and mind. body and mind, body and mind enhancement, biometrics, and digital globes, like the changing map. So odd, odd ones to pick, but they're, they're the three yeah. ones there. And then they've set up a forum like where you can actually discuss it and stuff. The reason I like this is this is like, you know, sponsored by the government actually saying that, Hey, we should actually look and see what people think about it and how it could work. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. I think this is kind of cool. The governments are actually now starting to, well, at least in the European Union, are actually starting to say, hey, let's ask people where they think things are going and we can start to work around that. Probably because they're scared of it. Uh, probably, <laughs> probably quite a bit. I mean, the, the, the videos they have here are freaking yeah. terrifying. My God. It's just like, yeah, I'll take this gene, I'll take this gene, I'll take yeah. this gene, I'll take 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 it could be, yeah. yeah but, but, yet, but then again, how much of that is just perpetuated by Hollywood? No, well, even the, the biometric <laughs> thing, like, you know, perpetually scanned wherever you go. I mean, like, India's oh, yeah, already yeah, doing yeah. it and stuff. Or like, the, minority report type thing. Yeah, and then, like, the whole body and mind enhancement, I mean, you get the idea of eugenics coming there and stuff. Uh, it's very inevitable. <laughs> well, that's it. New eugenics, inevitable. Yeah, so do you think this project should uh, would go well, or do you think it's a good idea? Government's actually trying to see what transhumanists think. Well, it's not just transhumanists, just people around. Setting up forums, getting people to discuss. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Like, it's a good idea, but I'm just trying to question why they're doing it. Yeah, true. Like, well, they said here why they want to do it. Like the, the sure biggest, the biggest push for education in all these sort of things has been like um, non-profit organisations, like you know Humanity Plus and um, yeah, and that's true. Foundation and all these other organisations. So why are the governments doing it? Like they must just be scared because <laughs> you think about trying to get um, they've got a big hoo ha. Fuck, why don't I use that word? Hoo-ha. <laughs> Hoo-ha. Hoo-ha. about like you know stem cell research and um like cloning humans like it shouldn't mm. be an issue or even genetically modified foods again shouldn't really be an issue no, the, the, the if people understood the, if people understood the science and the actual you know what it is well, i think that's mainly the they problem be scared. Is ethics is really ignorance with most of yeah. it yeah. apparently that's an unethical statement as well yeah the more you know you're a bad person. <laughs>